Television is a, a very mixed blessing. I've had a lot of experience with it over the last 30 years, and yes, you reach an awful lot of people. The Unsolved Mysteries program about Roswell, 28 million the first time around, 30 million the second time around. Those are huge numbers. I could lecture to 500 people a night for an awful long time and not reach that many people. Television has its downside, too. Live television, at least they can't edit you out. They can't put silly things in front of your appearance, like silly season is here again, or we asked Mr. Friedman uh, how much is two and two, and they have me giving an answer. The answer is six, but of course I was responding to how much is three and three. That's been done a few times. Uh, it takes an awful lot of time to fly to one coast wait around, do a show, come back. Most of the time you don't get paid. I belong to AFTRA, American Federation of Television Radio Artists. So if, if it's an entertainment program, I can get paid standard fee. If it's uh, supposedly a new news program, you don't get paid anything. Like uh, for Larry King out in the desert, I got up two in the morning, drove a couple hours, caught an airplane, caught another airplane, was in a limousine and was live on television from out in the desert uh, north of Las Vegas, starting in New York State uh, before that. And of course, there, there was no fee involved. Uh, people do recognize you from television. That got home to me. I was on the Tomorrow Show and go to turn in a rental car and somebody recognized me. Go through security, somebody made comments. Um, so. That That is good, and of course the Unsolved Mysteries program brought in a lot of new witnesses, and that's good. But uh, you do get to meet some interesting people. Uh, I enjoyed doing the Merv Griffin show, for example, uh, because he was so sharp. I didn't expect him to be, but I was wrong. Uh, questions were sensible. He had three scientists on the program. He listens very well. Not everybody does. And there are times you go out to the coast from here, that's a four hours time difference. And I almost didn't get on the uh, Lisa show. I mean, I'm sitting there, but she took forever on some of the other guests, and I practically had to push my way in to get my 30 seconds of fame. Uh, and then there are the terrible things like the alien autopsy program. I spent three days down in Washington I uh, spent three hours being interviewed in a silly place right under the airline passage from National Airport in Washington. We had to stop every two minutes for the noise of airplanes. It could have been done someplace else and get a quick bit of footage to establish we were in Washington. Then they used 30 seconds uh, in the program and left out some of my comments which indicated I wasn't satisfied the thing was genuine. So it's a mixed bag. Yes, fame is nice. You get uh, get recognized. Not always so pleasant for my family. It happens to be with me, and somebody comes up and starts talking, like because they've seen me on television. I I, I owe them my time. Uh, but it does carry a message to a lot of people, and I guess that's what I'm all about. Sort of the evangelist of the flying saucer world. Uh, you do what you can. Now, I like radio. I've always liked radio because I grew up with radio. And there again, you can reach sometimes, Art Bell Late Night Radio, for example, you reach millions of people. And it's incredible. I offered a free list of books and stuff uh, sent to my post office box, 958 in Holton, Maine, and I had a thousand requests. Uh, fortunately, all but five with the required self-addressed stamped envelope. That's a lot of response when you've got a you know, address two envelopes, use two stamps. Uh, it's just a good thing I didn't say send a postcard for free information. I'd still be filling the requests. Uh, so the media is a way to deliver a message. But I must say, many of the documentaries, the people who put them together, really don't care about truth, about accuracy. Uh, they're cheap programs to make. And people sometimes don't understand how these programs are made. They think you're all together because they see eight different people on a show. Almost never are you together with the other people, except in a live program, of course. 
And you don't know what they're going to do with what you said and what the other guy said. I've been on programs where the next guy after me was a guy I would never appear in public with. I have no control. Uh, the Larry King Show, people said, well, why didn't you talk about A, B, C, or D? Larry runs the show. I was lucky to get in what time I did get in. You have no chance to break in with your notion of what should be going on. He hears, you know, how much, how many seconds to a clip, to a ad, to a phone call. You, you don't have any control. And I did Nightline, and people asked me about it. Uh, how did it go? They said the next day. It's a live show. I said, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You were on the program. I said, yeah, but I don't know what you saw. Uh, Phil Klass and I were sitting next to each other, foot apart, with a little table in between us. We were told not to look at each other. Just look at your camera and you look at your camera. And people asked me, uh, how was Ted Koppel? I don't know. Never saw him, not even on a monitor. Heard him through my ear. So you miss all that nonverbal communication. You know, a raised eyebrow, a, uh, nervous hands, all that sort of stuff. He could have been in Timbuktu for all the difference it made. And one of the things that was aggravating about that show, which again reached a lot of people, they wouldn't allow me to bring in my blacked out documents. The subject was supposedly government cover-up. And I had the National Security Agency's 75% blacked out affidavit, which speaks very loudly. And the CIA documents all blacked out. They wouldn't let me bring them in. I argued, but you don't win those arguments. So there are serious limitations. If what you're trying to do is to find out the truth, then it is difficult. Now, I'm aggressive on television because I've learned that's the only way you can get your message across. But sometimes you wish the people who are doing the interview were much better prepared than they are. Uh, you know, they haven't read the book. Okay, that's not too surprising. But they don't know what you're all about, and they take a lot of time bringing up false claims. How come we only see, uh, we only have sightings by some farmer out in the field, or the only people who get abducted are out in the country? Those are nonsensical. How come most scientists don't believe in UFOs? Well, the polls show that that isn't true. So there's a whole bunch of these uh, conventional wisdom remarks which are false. And, you know, as a physicist, I'm aggravated by that. I want facts. I want data. If you don't know, say so. But don't pretend to be knowledgeable when you're not.